Hello my soccer universe and welcome to this week's Serie A review. Um, I think before we go into this week, uh, which was much happier, I'm wearing Milan again, wearing my but among the Milan jerseys, that probably might be my favorite, the third jersey. I think since I didn't really get to talk, I need to talk about the derby last weekend, just a teeny bit, and I want to do this up front before we go into the current, the current round. I mean, going into the derby, to be honest, the way things were going, especially the bad showing of Milan at Spezia, then um, not so great game at uh, Javena Svesda. Should have won it, but you know. And Inter having a whole week to prepare and being really on a roll, I did not expect good things. And then when I saw the lineup, I, you know, I'm not on the get rid of Romagnoli bandwagon, but I think he's not in a good form. And so I was actually expecting it will be Kier and uh, Tomori that will play, because those two actually could quiet uh, Lukaku in the Cup Derby. Milan was overrun. I mean, uh, and it seemed to be clear. I mean, uh, Inter playing in the th um, with 3-5-2, having a lot of midfield presence, especially with the likes of Brozovic, Eriksen and Barella in there. And then you have in the center Tonali and uh, Kessi, and you need kind of the wingers to get into. That never really worked. And um, it took Milan a whole lot of time to adjust to that. That it was only 1-0 after half an hour was basically a blessing. Then Milan got back into the game. I said it, uh, I think the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes of the first half, and definitely the first 10, 10, 10 minutes of the second half, but definitely Milan, uh, where especially after the half, uh, Ibrahimovic had so many sitters where Andanovic Really, he was he saved into there. I think if Milan scores there, the game goes a uh, different route. But Milan, of course, now pushing forward. Um, Tonali would have scored a wonderful goal, to be honest, uh, if that would have gone in. But then they caught out on the car counter attack again. Uh, Lukaku and um, uh, Lautaro uh, combining, who are already com combined for the first goal, where uh, Lukaku really, really called out. Um, uh, Romagnoli, and then uh, that they couldn't re read as Mankia did, it doesn't even uh, see Lotaro, and then Simon on the sex and go the call on the break, and then uh, <laughs> laid on Lukaku a, a few minutes later. I thought it will get a bigger route than that. Inter was flying at that point. Yes, if the goals Milan scored, but they, you know, also they could have been 2 3 nil down at the half, to be fair as well. It was also a very quiet game of Slatan, and I am meanwhile of the, of, of the opinion as much as I like the confrontation with Lukaku in the derby, I think it got too ugly and I think it overshadowed everything else. I mean, you saw the graffiti outside and I have to say, I I think the effect, there was a lot of negative effect on uh, Zlatan there. I even want to say that in the Cup Derby, he wanted to get himself sent off that he doesn't have to face anymore. Uh, is it Zlatan like? No. Zlatan anyway is not, not having a good time at the moment. I mean, uh, and before we go on the games, I mean, he had not only the Sanremo appearance that is coming now up this week, uh, which seems badly timed, but seemingly was arranged beforehand. Um, the other thing, the comments he made about LeBron, I mean, I don't want to get too much in, but I think Slaton is dead wrong here. Dead wrong, and I think it's a little bit of a disgrace that he actually made those comments. So yeah, just I don't want to back off uh, what happened in the derby. It was basically the one game that we really needed to talk about back there, and so yeah. Uh, I figured out if I put three pillows on the ball, I actually stay a little bit higher up, so let's hope that goes. And let's uh, look what happened this round. To me, the big takeaways are A, that Juve probably will not challenge for, for, for the title if you are such a, with such a lackluster showing against Verona. And yes, Verona is a nasty team to play at, and I think even last season, I think they played only 1-1 one, one there. Uh, that was not a good performance at all by Juve. Inter keeps on flying and uh, Milan, that was probably the biggest story, in an absolute crazy game at Roma, 
get a statement win, a deserved win that probably should have been higher, but uh, a win nevertheless. And I have to say this was the right answer after I think the last two weeks where things did not go right. So big statement win to kind of pull the stamp on your uh, top four plight. And so we'll move on. I would say we'll talk about some of the games and then we'll see where things are standing and how uh, things are going ahead. Um, it started, of course, at the first really game of interest. I mean, we had one Paul's Pound will be played uh, in, I think, two, uh, two weeks, two and a half weeks uh, or so on. Um, with Bologna Lazio. Lazio come, coming off that uh, rather horrendous loss to Bayern. But, you know, against Bayern, you can look stupid uh, rather quickly. Um, and they actually start up brightly, get a penalty, but Immobile. Skorupski, the goalkeeper for Bologna, is one that to watch. I think the, he will be playing at a big team very, 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 very soon. I even would think that uh, he might uh, soon replace uh, Chesney. He's one of the best goal goalkeepers, and, and Lazio and Immobile are not the first um, victim of his. Uh, he saved the penalty, although it was it. Once you get the side right, it was an easy, easy save. And then right from there, uh, two minutes later, Mbaye with the first shot on goal for Bologna make it 1-0. And that basically turned the game around. And Bologna was definitely the better team thereafter. Get a second goal through Sansone. Um, only a few chances for Lazio, but Bologna looked uh, much the better team throughout. And in, in the end, it was a, a deserved 2-0 win. I already said, Verona against Juve. Yes, Juve get the lead in the 49th through Ronaldo, but it was not a good performance. I mean, Juve is so hit and miss as of late. And I have to say, the last few times I saw Juve, it was more miss than hit, uh, especially in the Champions League. Um, that I wonder, I mean, it needs to... I know, they're in full rebuild mode. They're in full re rebuild mode, and I guess they are taking into account that maybe um, Serie A title, you won't go, you won't get a 10th in a row or something. Yeah, 10th in a row uh, will probably not happen. However, it really... This is Juventus. This is a team that actually got Cristiano to shoot for the Champions League. Since they have Chris, Chris, Cristiano, the, the mentality of the team kind of changed. They cannot hit the... He, he holds up his part of the deal. He scores goal. But they are putting not they are putting Ronaldo not in a very good position to actually succeed with this team and uh, he cannot leave them always. And then if you have uh, defensive errors or you know uh, outheaded by Barak uh, for, for a header, uh, the whole defensive structure, and, you know, we have now, uh, was it Bonucci, and Chiellini, Bonucci uh, was in, in, injured, Chiellini's injured, so as a whole lot, it's still patchwork, although it's not a bad team. I have to say maybe next season we will see a completely different view, but for this season I think the uh, train is more or less gone. I think Juve will definitely not catch Inter anymore. Um, Atalanta themselves uh, in the early game against Samson Sampdoria get a kind of professional win, you know, Gasparini up the stands. Uh, Malinowski, really nice goal to make it 1-0 before the half, right after half a, a goal was disallowed, but then uh, Gossens uh, in the 70th makes it 2-0 two, two and you know, Atalanta does what Atalanta does. Uh, best gets wins uh, that against uh, especially smaller opponents and maybe anger the upper ones as well. Um, big win for Cagliari, but I'm not sure if it's a little bit too late. Um, Inter starts flying. I mean, the first mid, Lattano to is Lukaku. I mean, those two are just amazing. Uh, the top two at the moment at Serie A. Um, uh, the one thing, I don't know why Inter played in the third jer jer jerseys, but you know, I like I like the jersey well, well enough that, that I actually don't mind. Um, Inter should have been up by a much higher score. Like maybe that, that's the one thing. They're not scoring enough goals, but uh, thank, thankfully they do so. Keep the um, players around. But then uh, the second goal, I mean, all the Genoa defenders go onto the, uh, Lukaku, who then has Darmian free and <laughs> puts it over 69. It's 2-0. And then Sanchez uh, adds a third one. It should have been more, to be honest. So uh, Inter continue to fly, although we, as I said, they have a very, very interesting game next week. Udine gets a late win over Fiorentina. That, that's a game that I always uh, kind of have kind of circled on the calendar since 2017 when with my wife we visited both towns. So yeah, 
Uh, also, there was some nasty, you know, when Astori died, it also happened in Ude. So it's kind of a game that I always have a little bit an eye on. I saw a little bit of Napoli against Benevento. Uh, Therese Mertens gets the first goal, he's back. Uh, Napoli sorely, desperately needing a win. Unfortunately, they had Benevento to play against, uh, who I think now nah, Napoli can always outclass. Politano, very, very weird goal. Uh, he got a ball, a ball which had, I think, he, with his knee in, but it's not clear for, uh, for first if it was an own goal or not. Uh, but gets the 2 0, and that basically uh, settled the game. Although Kulibalo is in sand off with a yellow red, and but they can easily hang on. It's 2 0 for Napoli. And then the big evening game between Roma and Milan. I mean, in the first 10 minutes, Milan should have been up by 3 0. They scored three goals, but all of them were offside. Um, I think all correctly so. I think the Tomori one was not because Tomori was uh, sitting in, in in the goal to come then onside. I think it was in the build-up there was an offside, uh, but I think even if it was in, in, in the goal, it would have counted as an offside. Uh, not 100% there. Uh, the one that really angered me is when Rebic makes a pass to Zlatan, who can tap it into the net, and Zlatan is a step ahead of the ball. I mean, you're 39 year old, I know you're eager to score the goal, pull it in. I mean, I was fine when he got the ball of the goalkeeper um, and then uh, wanted to back heel it in, in the internet, although with a little bit more oversight, he gets the ball, he should have played it to, I, I, I think it was Charles Noglu out there, would have been much better, but you know. I understand that you want to go for goal and, 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 and get it done and he really, really was trying to get this goal, but it didn't come. And then actually uh, Roma had two chances and I had also a goal scored that I was like, oh no, but then for, for fortunately a foul was given in the build-up uh, to that goal. And just when the half, I mean, it was a crazy half going back and forth and, you know, not great defending, but it was entertaining to watch and that there was no goal scored, was rather a travesty. And then... Um, I think someone stepped on Calabria's uh, foot. Was it Fazio? I think it was Fa Fazio who stepped on Calabria's foot in the box. Uh, Rev Rev that doesn't give a penalty initially, but you can see it. it's directly on, on the line. So it is a penalty. It's by VAR. It is given. Cassia steps up and calmly. And again, Cassia, not Ibrahimovic. And I'm very happy that this is now established in this squad because Cassia is a much better pen penalty. And number two should not be Ibrahimovic either. It should be Charles Arnogli or someone like that. So that set the half up well. I also decided to wear the black one because Milan played in those blue jer jerseys, bluish jerseys, and I'm still thinking about that, that although for a while I was not. The problem is that Charlie Nogel came off in an injury. Ibrahim Diaz came, 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 came on, and while I like his technical skills, he is a little bit, you know, a little bit too slow, sloppy. There was then a huge chance where I think he's in the same path as uh, Tia Hernandez, who went for goal, but uh, you know, if um, Brian Diaz gets out, out of the way, they can uh, communicate much, much better and will be a goal. And the right on the other end, Spinazzola plays to Vera 2 with a really, really nice shot, makes it 1 1. I was gutted from that. However, then Ibrahimovic also come, comes off. He already was in the first half a little bit with a muscle injury. I don't know how serious, how serious it is. But he comes off, Leao comes on, and at that moment then Salamakers plays a ball to Rebic, who can put it really nicely in it. It was a wonderful goal, and I have to say, the work rate for Rebic, he was one, he was probably the best Milan player uh, on, on the day, although I have to give it to Cassier also, who was really, again, everywhere. When Cassier can dominate a midfield like that, Milan is doing well. It is just when Milan's midfield is overwhelmed, but you know the Roma is a little bit light, especially up front and then in the in in in, in the midfield. It was rather easy for Milan to to control it. and hang on. They do the problem is that Rebic comes off, Krunic comes on, which I found a rather a weird choice. There should have been probably when Leao came on. There was a penalty foul. I thought Milan should have gotten a penalty penalty there. Um, I was a little bit sad to see that they couldn't kill off the game, but in the end they hang on 2-1. Very, very, very important win for Milan because now they put again some distance between them, Juventus and Roma. Atalanta stays there. So you can see, I mean, it's 52, four points behind Inter. You stay a little bit in the title race, although Inter's chances of winning that one, of course, increase significantly. And uh, funnily enough, the chances for championship here are still a little bit more for Juve than for Milan. But I think if one is gonna catch Inter, it is Milan, and I'm not putting my money on that for sure. Roma and um, sliding now out of it again. 
the one thing that you can speak is pro Roma is they are getting the points against the teams that they should get, but they are not picking up enough points against the top, the other top six or uh, top seven teams, and that's uh, the trouble. And that's why Fonseca is under scrutiny, which I still find ridiculous. Lazio also, I mean, um, you and Atalanta put themselves in a really good, good, good spot because Roma Lazio losing uh, is good for them as as well. And Napoli with with the win is probably a little bit back in action. Napoli only with one draw. On the bottom, uh, despite the Cagliari win over Crotone, I think it will be hard. I mean, Torino has a game in hand. I don't know, Benevento and Spezia. Spezia is, they won against Milan and since then everyone was praising them because they had a really good string of results and since then they're a little bit on the downward spiral. Uh, it might as well be the, Spe the Spezia and Benevento might get into trouble again, but at the moment it's Cagliari, Parma and Crotone. Uh, Adjusting, you know, we need to adjust because you and Napoli have a game in hand, which is also scary for the 17th, but let's see if that uh, is going to happen that way. Uh, so they would move up, up a little bit to Roma, uh, according to that, is only in sixth uh, spot. Interesting, the bars, uh, Milan still the best team, but you know, also Inter outperforming the, the expectations, as is still Sassuolo. Um, and Torino, of course, a big negative surprise because that team, I keep saying it should be much, much better. As for the expected standings, Milan now, on average, will be above Juventus. To be expected, hence they're also up here. Um, Atalanta move, uh, stays in fourth place and Roma, you know, dropping out a little bit. So uh, it, as exciting as we thought that Serie A will be, the, it gets a little bit more decisive. I mean, clear, the top seven and then the rest, but you know, within Inter is far and away at the moment and they have the best squad and they have the advantage of having to only play one game game week unless it's a, a midweek round as we have this season uh, this week but then it's really Milan, Juve, Atalanta and you think that maybe Napoli, Roma and Lazio could slide in there but rather not and then I think those three are the ones that will go to Europe because we already have Juve and Atalanta in the cup final so it's very very likely that um, if you know, both of them are like like, like to qualify for the Champions League, so uh, the last spot will be uh, hand, handed out via the league. So, but we have to see how this will develop, and on the bottom, it's also so. Um, well, I still think it's very, very in interesting because we have many teams up there. The title race is basically gone, and this is a little bit of a shame. But maybe, maybe Inter will pull another Inter, and will come back to the group. We have a midweek round. Um, yeah, I have to say I'm missing a little bit the uh, uh, must-watch matchup. Um, you know, Lazio, Torino, no, Juventus, Spezia, yeah, Sassol, Nav, Napoli, that used to be a good game, but Sassol is also kind of going somewhere. Milan, Udine is a classic trap game. Atalanta should have no problem with Crotone. Um, Fiorentina, Roma is probably the big name matchup, so probably that's one uh, to watch out for, but Roma actually should get the win there too. And I don't think the Parma will get anything against Inter. However, the weekend round, there is the big one. Inter, Atalanta, and I have to say, this is probably one of the last chances uh, that we can catch Inter. And the problem is that Milan is playing at Verona, which is not an easy opponent to play against. Uh, Juve Lazio, also a really, really nice matchup. So I think we have quite some stuff coming up on the weekend. Uh, where Inter, if they win against Atalanta, I think they are through. Although they have a really tough schedule uh, towards the end. But I think by that time they could have enough distance that they have uh, decided the title race. Uh, Juve Lazio, I think, is also a big one. And as I said, um, Milan, the midweek, the this week's round, I mean, are games that Milan should win. But Udine is never an easy win, and Verona uh, is always a nasty opponent where they already drop points again. So I have to see how it will go. So, yeah, talked a lot about Serie A now. Uh, it's still an exciting season. I'm still, it's still my favorite league to watch. Uh, let me know what you thought about the action the past few, uh, yeah, we can say the past two weeks. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye!